Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will generate, analyze, and export to Excel a comparative profit and loss from QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Hello, here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be looking at a profit and loss, a special profit and loss, a customized profit and loss, a comparative profit and loss, comparing in this case two months, months of January and February. In order to do that, we're going to go down to the reports on the left side. We're going to start off with the standard profit and loss. I'm going to go to the frequently run reports. And we typically will have the profit and loss here. However, because it will be frequently run, but if it's not, we're going to type it into the search area and we just type in profit and loss. This is a standard financial statement report, so we should be looking at this a lot and we will be looking at this a lot as we go forward. We'll select the profit and loss and then we will change this date range, that date range of 01012120228221, that January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, and run that report. So here is our report. Remember that we are uh, entering the data. This is going to be the end process. So this will be the uh, end data set after we run this. So if you're running this problem with us, we won't have any data yet. This is going to be what we will end up with. This is how we can take a look at these reports and format the data that we will be constructing. We will look at these reports as we go. So if we scroll down here, we have the, the normal income statement here, or profit and loss statement. And our objective now in our customized report is to have the two-month time period. So note we have January and February. And that's uh, now we want, Jan we want the month of January, the month of February. Then we want to see the dollar change, the difference between January and February for each line item. And we want to see the percentage change. How much did it increase or decrease in a percentage terminology? So in order to do that, we need to understand a few different things. One is that this date range here, January uh, through February, is means that something like every account, including the income or revenue account, represents revenue that has been accumulating for a two-month time period. So we need to understand that being different than the balance sheet, which is really only showing the end date. If I put the same date into the balance sheet, it would only show numbers. The only relevant date, unless we changed anything for most accounts, is this end date because it's going to show us, for example, cash as of 228, uh, 228. It's not going to show us cash that we earned through that time period on the balance sheet. It's only going to show us where we stand as of the end point of the range we select. However, here, this revenue account means that we have been accumulating dollars from January 1st to February 28th. So when we make a comparative uh, balance sheet, uh, income statement, we need to kind of understand that because it's a little bit tricky for uh, QuickBooks to understand what we want to do when we're making this comparative profit and loss statement. So remember what we wanted to do is, is accumulate revenue from January 1st through December 31st and make one column January's revenue and expenses and then accumulate February 1st to February 28th and make another column with those groupings and then we'll and then we'll subtract the two out so in order to do that uh, we're, we're first going to tell QuickBooks hey we, we want you to just have the end uh, one month and then we're going to say uh, we would like you to compare the prior month to it so instead of having the full date range of January uh, to February, we want just the second month, which is 020121. So we've got February 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, the second month that we will be working with. Comparing that once we're done to the first month, January, we will run that report. So here's our information just giving us the month of February. The next thing we're going to do is go to this item here, which is to select the period. We're going to select the period and we're going to say that we want, this is the current month and we want to have the previous period, which in this case is the previous month. We're not going to choose the previous year because we clearly are, are not using a year. We have the month of February. We want to compare that to the prior month, the month of uh, January. 
So we're going to select this icon. We will be checking these, but let's not do that yet. We're going to click off of this. Uh, it doesn't yet calculate unless we run that report. So here we then run the report and we see that we have February and January. Note the format here in that we have the current month first. So we're reading from left to right in generally importance level, meaning the latest month is probably the one that we're most focused on and therefore it becomes first and then January is the prior period. It's going to be second. Uh, as opposed to being reading from left to right in order of when things happen, which means January would happen before February. So we've got the latest month first, and in most cases, the most important month. Now, of course, we're going to line this up. We've got income, uh, cost of goods sold, and expenses for the two-month time period. This number in revenue, for example, representing the accumulation of revenue from February 1st to February 28th. And this revenue, there's, there's no rent revenue in January. This revenue account representing revenue generated from January 1st to January 31st. No, we also have January 4th through the 31st here. That's probably because this is our first month of operation. So we may have had a, a partial period uh, here. They're trying to indicate that it's a, a partial period possibly. So then we have that information. Now we also want to see the difference between the two. So we want to see the difference, meaning what's the difference between uh, this income and that income in a dollar amount would be useful. So we're going to select the same drop down here and we want to see the dollar change. So we'll select the dollar change. I'm going to click off of that, let it, let it think, and then run that report. And it'll give us that change. So of course the 4,500 minus zero, there was no uh, rental income in January gives us the, the difference or the change 4,500. The later year 2,500 minus the prior year of January means that there was an increase of 3,260. The later year, the later year, the later month of February 9,300 minus the prior month of January 508 gives us the difference or increase from January to February of 8,792. Obviously, we go all the way through here and we can see that. Now the changes we're going we're going to have are going to be drastic because this is the first month of operation. February is really the first month that we have uh, a full true data that uh, is it doesn't have like the startup uh, costs. So as the business moves on, you would have uh, you would think to have more conformity from month uh, to month. As we first start out, there may be some uh, extremes as as uh, we get the business running, get the business going, get the business set up so that now we also want to see the percentage change over here this is a great change in terms of dollar amounts but it doesn't help as much if we're really comparing we're a guitar seller and we do guitar lessons if we're comparing our guitar shop to a, a large guitar shop uh, then we can't compare the dollar amounts or the dollar changes in revenue because they're going to be much bigger in terms of dollar changes. Any change in dollar to them will be a lot larger than the dollar changes to us. However, uh, we can look at the change from month to month in percentage changes. And that's a way that we can compare and benchmark to uh, companies of a similar industry of different size. So to do that, we're going to go to this drop down one more time. We're going to select the percentage change. And we're going to click off of that to let it think then run that report so here we have the percentage change now this this is often a little bit confusing for people to read but it's not too bad once you do it a few times so what we're saying is if we do the full calculation here we're going to say that we had in let's say uh, the second case here in this row we had 2500 minus 2467.4 February minus January means that there was a 32.6 increase. Then we're going to take that increase and we're going to divide by the prior year. We're going to take that and divide by the prior year, this number, 2467.4. If we move the decimal two places over to make it a percent, we get 1.32%. 1.32%. So the income here increased by $32 or 1.32%. This percentage change is really useful when, and it's used not just in this type of data, any kind of data where we're trying to compare things of different sizes, but still should be relatively the same benchmarking in this case, differences in, in revenue generation from one month to another in similar industries. 
then uh, the percentage change is something that can be useful and give us some relevant information uh, to, to look at that type of data. So that's going to be it. We're going to go up here and customize this and I'm going to remove uh, the stuff we generally remove down here. I'm going to remove this information. So we'll go back up top. We'll go to the customize. We're going to go to the header and footer and select that triangle that's going right to the triangle so it's going down. And then we're going to uncheck the company name. Uh, actually, we want the company name. <laughs> we're going to uncheck the date prepared, the time prepared, and the report basis. Then we will once again run that report. Then we have this report here run. If we scroll back down all the way to the bottom, we see that that information has now been removed as we wanted. We will now export this to Excel. We're going to export this to Excel simply clicking the export option and export to Excel. We are in Chrome and it should open on this side if it's in Chrome. If you're in some other browser, it will open in some other way. Just make sure that you have the options set up in the security settings to allow Excel to work. I'm going to close this, going to enable the editing, and there is our information. So we haven't run into any problems really in formatting in that it all fits on one page. Note that we can check that by clicking down here. This is the page layout, and that's one way we can see how it's going to print. So if we scroll down, we're saying, yeah, it all fits on one page. I'm pretty happy as long as it fits on one page in terms of a column width. Um, if it's more than one page long, I'm not, that's okay. But if there's a page break, like right between here or something, that's a problem. So I'm going to go back to the normal view over here. We will see problems like that in the future and we'll, we will uh, um, adjust things and talk about how to, how to adjust that to add when those problems turn up. Now, of course, we could change this a little bit. We could remove the total. We could remove uh, this partial period. We might say, hey, that's the full month of January because that, even though it's our first month of operation, we might want to remove that. We can, we can touch this up a bit uh, in, in ways we may not be able to do as easily if we were working in uh, QuickBooks alone. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to go to the File tab. We're going to scroll down to the Save As. We'll browse to where we want to put this on the computer. We're going to save this into the Excel Docs 2. We're going to save that there. I'm going to change the name to be a bit more customized. We're going to call this a comparative profit and loss report. We may want to have the dates of January and February of 2021, something like that. Uh, you can uh, you can work on your format and really work where you really would just want to keep what what's been done before you're working on it if it's not you starting this from scratch us starting this from scratch then uh, you might want to obviously follow the convention of somebody else if we're making it from scratch then we really want to think about how this thing will uh, be ordered so that we can go back to it in the easiest way possible we really want to think to the future and say hey when we when we have to go back to this information, what's the easiest way that we can see how to pull this up in the most relevant fashion if there's like a year, two years or five years worth of data that we're shuffling through. So we're going to save that and that will be the uh, comparative profit and loss. Hello. In this presentation, we will take a look at a comparative profit and loss statement within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will be looking at a profit and loss statement and how to make a comparative profit and loss statement. If you have a backup, you can restore the backup by going to the File tab and Restore as has been seen in a prior presentation. We currently have the Open Windows List open, which can be found at the View dropdown and Open Windows List. In the open windows list, we have the home page can be found at the company dropdown and home page. We're going to be making a custom profit and loss, really looking at the custom settings in the profit and loss. However, this time we're looking for a comparative profit and loss. In order to do that, we'll start off with the standard profit and loss by going to the reports dropdown up top, going to the company and financials. Selecting that first item, that first item of Profit and Loss Standard. We're going to change the dates to the range of 010121 
January 1st, 2021 to 12-31-21, December 31st, 2021. This is where we're going to start off. This is our profit and loss. Our profit and loss is, in essence, QuickBooks balance sheet or <laughs> QuickBooks income statement. Profit and loss equivalent to QuickBooks income statement where we have income, which is also could be called revenue, and the expenses broken out into cost of goods sold and other expenses. Bottom line number on the income statement or profit and loss is net income. So here's the net income in this case being a loss. Scrolling back up, what we would like to see is a comparison of two periods, in this case two months. We're looking for January and February. Those are the two months we would like to compare. In order to do that, we're going to go up to the customized report option up top. And we're going to keep, we're going to change the date range a bit. We're going to make it uh, to the second month that we want to see. And that might seem a little unusual. And before we uh, look at that, let's explain that uh, a bit because there's two ways to do this. We could say it's from January to February 02, 28, 21 for the two months, January all the way through February. And instead of having the total here, and if we were to see the total, we can say, okay, there's the total. It doesn't give us two months of a breakout. It just gives us the total of what's happening in terms of sales from January through February here. And that's not what we're looking for. We're, we are looking for two separate reporting periods for the month of January and the month of February on the same document. So we could say custom and then change the total to month. By doing that, we can say okay. And that'll actually give us that breakout of January and February. And that's great. However, it doesn't give us the difference. And that's what we would like to see now. We would like to see a comparative uh, of not just the two months, but also see the difference between them and a percentage breakout, the percentage increase and decrease. To do that, we're going to go back to the customized report. And I'm going to make this just for the month of February. So we're going to make it for the later month in which we're looking to have a comparison of January and February, the later month being February. So I'm going to make it as of 020121, February 1st, 2021 to February 28th. That's important to understand. We're going to change this back from month to total. And then we're going to go to the previous. So now we're going to say, hey, this is the month we're in. I want you to take the previous 30 days. And so it's going to say, okay, we're just going to take the previous 30 days. If we do just that, then take a look at it. We see a similar layout, except it doesn't have the total column. And it puts the later month first, the later month and then the, and then the sooner month. Now we're going to add the difference column to this calculation. So we're going to go back up to the custom reports. Just going to say, I want to see the dollar change now and okay and now it takes february minus january and it gives us that dollar change and of course if we were to calculate this out all it's doing is taking the 2500 minus 2467.4 giving us the 3260. next we want to have the percentage change the dollar change is great for us but uh, it may not give us a complete perspective and if we were to compare to another type of company say we're a small burger shop and we're comparing ourselves to McDonald's. The dollar change will not be comparable, will not be uh, benchmarkable to the dollar change that McDonald's might have. However, the percentage change in income could give us some uh, information, some knowledge in order to, uh, to do better decision making. So we're going to go to customize report and we want the percentage change, percentage change. And then we're going to say, okay. And there we have this other column. And what the, all that is doing is it's taking now, we just calculated the change of 32.6 divided by the previous month, which is 2467.4, gives us this 0.013. If we multiply that times 100, we get 1.32. There's the 1.32. And uh, that's, that's what we are looking for. So there's, only, there's a 1% increase here. And that, that percentage increase is something that we can then compare uh, to, to other uh, companies and that'll give us some, some useful information. 
We're going to customize a couple other things. We're going to go back to the customized report up top and do some of our normal customization now. And that's going to be going to the header and footer. We're going to take off the date prepared, the time prepared, the report basis so we don't see this information showing up. That's going to be removed. And then we're going to add the footer on just... Uh, just to add a name to the footer, which might be something we want to be in the practice of doing. And we will then save that. So there we have this. This information has gone. We have that there. We're going to go ahead and export this information now. We have already set up an Excel document that uh, we want to export this to when exporting a prior income statement. And we are going to export this then to an existing Excel document. To do that, we will go to the Excel up top. We're going to create a new worksheet, even though it will be in an existing workbook. Say OK, new Excel sheet. And then we want to go to an existing workbook. So we're going to click that item. We're going to browse. And then look for where we want to put it. So I'm going to go to uh, this folder. I'm in section 3. And I called it just uh, the Section 3 Reports. I'm going to select that. We could select Open. I usually just double click on it. And then we're going to export that report. It should then open that ex existing Excel file. Uh, export this information to a new tab on that existing Excel file. Ready for us to then manipulate the data. Do the standard things we have to do in order to manipulate the data. The first being to drag this to the outer column. So I put this before the prior report we made. I'm just going to grab the tab at the bottom, drag it to the end, and then I'm going to call it, I'm going to double click on it and call it something like the comparative P and L. Then I typically go to the top. We're going to go to the view tab, I'm going to go to the windows group, I'm going to unsplit the panes, unsplit the panes. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to the uh, page layout, this little icon right here. Just to double check, if we select that, that the header is in the header section. And then it prints out on all one page and it looks nice. Everything looks nice. Looks like it's going to print well. So we're going to go back to the normal view and save this information. That's going to be our comparative income statement on the Excel sheet. And go ahead and close that back out. And that will be that for uh, the comparative profit and loss.